Hello everyone. Welcome back to our data science series from Praveen Kumar and Sridhar Purandare. As we discussed in our first video, we need to pick up basics of statistics, Python or similar and domain skills to become a good data scientist. This video focuses on basics of statistics commonly used as a foundation in data science. There are a lot of jargons related to data science and it feels overwhelming. But like I mentioned earlier, we will cover these concepts in a simple and easy to understand manner. In this part, we will look at mean, median, mode, law of large numbers, Pareto principles and a few more. There is lot more to statistics. However, we don't need everything under the sun. This is a curated list of few concepts to familiarize yourself for data science. Let's look at mean, median and mode. Mean is nothing but the average value of given set of numbers. As shown, all we have to do is make sum of all numbers and divide the sum by count of numbers. Median is the middlemost number when sorted in ascending or descending order. Mode is the element which occurs most often in the collection. How is your data distributed? Remember the distribution of marks by different students that we studied in school. Table shows marks by students, frequency and FD square. Few students are top performers while few are at the bottom. A majority are distributed in between. Think about appraisals in a company. Top performers may get promoted with a raise. Low performers may not get a raise or even worse, they may get fired. Standard deviation is a very popular measure in data science. We can calculate skewness and correlation of data sets that helps analytics and predictions in machine learning. The central limit theorem is about taking samples and finding the means. As you take more samples, your graph will look more like a bell curve. For example, look at the average weight of students of a school distribution. By dividing them into smaller groups for sampling and calculating the means, the graph produced will be a normal distribution. Hypothesis testing in statistics is a way for you to test the results of a survey or experiment to see if you have meaningful results. This is done by figuring out the odds. Think about this girl staying in a hotel which has an emergency fire alarm system. There are four possibilities. No alarm, no fire. Alarm rings and there is a fire. Both these cases are true or positives. No fire, alarm rings. This is a false positive. Or there is a fire but alarm does not ring. This is a false negative. While both these cases are false, one of them causes panic only, but the other could be life-threatening. When working on machine learning problems, we should consider these two cases in mind and program accordingly. A-B testing is a way to compare two versions of single variable. Large social media sites like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram uses A-B testing to make user experience more successful and as a way to streamline their services. As seen in the above image, one version uses login screen at first and then all the shopping pages. Another version will show the shopping pages first and then login page. The result of this experiment enables choosing the right version for the company. The Pareto principle states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of the causes. Think about a sculpture artist or a painter. 70 to 80% of the shape or outline is achieved in a few hours. But the detailing may take a few days, like the eyes, colors, toes of the sculpture, the nail ends, etc. The low-hanging fruits are addressed first in a short time while the bigger issues in a problem are addressed with longer term techniques. Pareto also implies that most things in life are not equally distributed. The same thing applies for your data sets too in machine learning. The law of large numbers is a theorem 
that describes the result of performing the same experiment a large number of times according to the law the average of the results obtained from a large number of trials should be close to the expected value and will tend to become closer as more and more trials are performed when you go to the mall you may have seen some games like guess the number of jelly beans in a jar machine learning results get more and more accurate with a large set of data let's say your friend inquires you about a house in the prime area where you stay is available for 200k but you know that the price in that locality is not even close as per your knowledge you may know that it is anywhere between 500 to 700k confidence interval is a measure depicting your confidence about a value range i am 90% confident that it will take 40 to 50 minutes to reach the city i am 50% confident that i will make money in this trade many machine learning programs use confidence intervals when validating accuracy here is a quick recap of what we discussed so far thank you for watching the video there will be more videos coming soon keep watching the space goodbye and have a nice day